So let's start any second now. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Schmack a gob. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I have a special guest with me. I got Noel from Baphomet's Lounge. What's going on, Noel? How you doing, my good man? How are you doing down there in sunny Florida? Greetings from sunny oh. Buffalo. It's nice, man. I got my windows open. It's nice, a little chill air here. It's beautiful, man. Oh, we're Buffalo. at single digits. We're in single digits, but oh, yeah. uh, I still love it up here. Yeah, you love the cold, dude? I love the cold, and uh, I like it better than sn alligators and mosquitoes the size of your fist. I'll tell you that much. You know that it took me over 30 years to finally see an alligator when I lived down here? <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> yeah, because I don't live near the Everglades, so, you know. Yeah, exactly. But, um, all right, dude. So, um, <laughs> I was very impressed by your schmackamagab intro to my news. And I said, dude, I got to get this guy. I got to get this guy on the show. But then I lost your email. And then finally you got a hold of me. I forgot how. I think you left a comment or something. And I said, dude, I want to do a show with you because uh, you're you're kind of animated. I, I dig your style. Bro. And um, and so I, I spoke with you on the phone last week and I said, yeah, I want to do something. And then you said, um, let's talk about Kiss Unmasked because I love Unmasked. And I said, Perfect, because I hate it. So we'll have a yin and yang now. As I understand, Noel is going to educate me about well, I, I, why I, I'm I, wrong. I, no, no, no. I mean, there's no right and there's no wrong here. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm more going to try and give you a different perspective on listening to that album. You know, um, and I think that's, we all go through phases. We all go through things. And, you know, sometimes you, you, you may not like something or whatever, you know, like I hate, I hate bananas, man. Nothing I could do to make me want to eat bananas. I hate them, but I have to put them in my morning shakes because I'm old and I need to start taking shakes in the morning. So it's an awful thing. So it's something you do because life puts you in that state. Other times there was stuff I didn't like when I was a kid or whatever, and now I like it because whatever, you know, things change. But I think one of the biggest problems here and with a lot of albums people don't like is they they fall into the association of it's an album by this band, you know, Oh, Unmasked is a Kiss album. And I'm going to put a different idea on this, and I'm going to run a couple ideas. By the time Kiss had gotten to the Unmasked album, I mean, Peter Chris was already out of the band. I mean, he definitely didn't play on Dynasty, and he was out of the band, no doubt about it. So he had no... He sang one song on Dynasty, but he has no footprint, no thumbprint, nothing on Unmasked. Already by Kiss Alive 2, G, um, Ace was only showing up, you know, from his the, the, the studio side of Kiss Alive 2. Ace only played his stuff. Okay. Now, I'll, I'll back this up with a little trivia. So there's a guy by the name of John Mathias. He's actually a Buffalo guy. He um, a producer and engineer. He engineered Dynasty. He actually mixed uh, Battle Hymns, the first album by um, Man of War. Man of War. War forevermore. My God, exactly. Uh, yeah, he back to, he's actually a Buffalo guy. He actually passed away uh, at the age of like 49. He came back to Buffalo. Man, that's yeah, too, man. it is bad. It is sad. Well, he was one of the secondary engineers on Dynasty. And I was in the studio, this is about 10, 15 years ago, with another producer. And we were talking, I was playing bass with something, we were talking, and oh, yeah, yeah, blah, 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 John Matthias, and oh, yeah, we were in Dynasty. And man, I love I love Gene's bass playing on that album. And the dude looks at me and says, dude, John played bass on that album. Ooh. And it's John Matthias, that producer. Oh, you know, oh, and and, and it, it, you'll find out some fat fast out there that, that, that Gene had stopped sort of appearing on the albums, you know, had... You know, he just showed up and sang his songs. So for all intents and purposes, these albums are really Paul Stanley solo albums. And if you look at it under that banner, or if you just took out the name Kiss and looked at the album, it's a damn good album. But fortunately, we have these bookends of the band that's established a, 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 a book of work up to it. You know what I'm saying? So, so that that's what I'm gonna really try to say to people, you know, not educate, just take Kiss out of the equation because in a lot of ways they weren't in it, you know. 
So I, I'll take it right from the top um, on that album is, you know, Is That You? I love that song. And there's a lot of really cool things about it. You know, that, that kind of counter melody. Is that you falling up my God. I mean, they never did those type of, um, how can I say, um, just sort of those type of arrangements. Kiss was always sort of very banal in some of their arrangements, to be honest with you, you know, almost Neanderthal in some of their ways. That was one of the cool things about them. Uh, but as they're maturing, you know, and and I mean, they didn't even write this. This was a, Gerald McMahon was the outside writer on this. You know what I'm saying? So it's really a cover song, uh, you know, played by some high end session musicians. There and is I'm, there is a recording of the original. I'm not sure if it was released before Unmasked, but you can go on YouTube and hear uh, the different version of it. Exactly, and I and I really feel that. Uh, you know, that band, that, that is just a great song. Now, you, I'm saying you probably don't dig it at all. Uh, no, actually, I do like it, but I don't like the, you always can't. That part kind of ruins it for me, but the rest is rocking. You know, well, yeah, you know, and that's a great point. Let me, that is kind of a, a jizz sort of concept there. And, and one of the things you have to remember is, Paul is not singing in his full voice on that album. As a matter of fact, he's singing a lot of falsetto. You always get the voice you like. Well, who was doing that at that time? I mean, the Bee Gees. The Bee Gees made a career on falsetto singing. You know, that was part of the disco thing. So that's kind of why you hear this childish voice singing that section. So, yeah, you're right. That is kind of a, a, a it's a cool part, but because of him singing in the falsetto, I think, it gives it that childish vibe that kind of is off-putting, you know? But if you listen to that part, it's kind of cool because, especially when it, when, when it near the end, when it goes like, yeah, bah, 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 and the bass is kind of riding all up, you know, the, 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 the song is kind of like almost playing off each other. And, and, and like, you're a big Abba head, super troop. That song is great. Of the way it goes super pop, you know what I'm saying? The, the mute, if you listen to that, the way that song is, they're all kind of that, that part kind of does the same thing, right? You know, so I would actually recommend listening to it and just take that, take the fact that he's singing falsetto out of the equation. Yeah, that's what I said. Without that part, I mean, I like everything else about it. Yeah, and, and overall, the other thing about the about that album is the guitars are really emasculated, you know, they're not as crunchy, they're kind of. You know what I'm saying, and 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 that kind of permeates throughout the album. So, you know, next up, Shandy, big hit, big Australian hit. I like the song a lot. I like a lot of the textures. Again, the big problem with it is I think Paul sings it in that falsetto. You know, Shandy tonight's tonight. But if someone else did it, if Donna Summer had done that song. That's a fantastic tune. Well, um, when it first came out, you see, uh, here's my problem with Unmasked. And, um, you know, I'm a big Kiss fan. I got into Kiss, like, you know, late 70s. And then by the time Unmasked came out, I moved on to the New Wave of British Heavy Metal. And I liked Priest and Van Halen, Back in Black, all these great albums. And then I didn't listen to Unmasked because I saw the Shandy video on either Don Kirshner's rock concert or Midnight. And I was like, oh, see, at this time, if it ain't heavy, it's crap. That was my mentality back then. Now, I absolutely love Shandy. I love this song. I, I, I really love this song. I think it's, a, it's, great, it's a great power pop tune. It is. And I, like you... Was that I was an 80s metal head, died in the wool, and if it ain't metal, it's shit. All right. Right. So it was only like 10 years ago I like got into Depeche mode. And I was like, well, these guys, because I was not gonna have any of that new wave bullshit, you know? And like all of a sudden, I'm like, whoa, this is heavy, man. Whoa, this Tender in band. These guys are heavy, you know what I'm saying? Like you at that time, that era, give me metal or give me death, you know, heavy metal, it's the law, Halloween style. 
you know. Yeah. So yeah, you're right, and 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 that's yes. Yeah, Shandy is an outstanding power pop song. Power pop greatness. Uh, I yeah. have nothing bad to say about Shandy yeah. now. And uh, but I understand your your point of view. You know, yeah, there's still a couple more tracks I like off this album, but there's well, we'll, we'll, well yeah, we'll continue on. Talk, talk to me, classic Ace. You know, I, you know, love the song. What what more can you say? This is probably Ace riding high off of his solo album and the songwriting sort of um, boost that he got because of that album taken off. Talk to me is just an extension of that, you know. I, I got nothing to, really bad to say about that song. Yeah, well, I am an Ace guy, and uh, you know he's my favorite member. But I gotta say, this is the only good thing I can say about this song. It's better than the other two Ace songs. <laughs> You know, yeah. not a well, fan. We, we will get to that. Yes, not, we, not a fan of this song, but if I'm going to judge it against what else Ace does on here, yeah, it's not that bad. You know, so it's it's a little too sugary for me, and uh, I understand. You know, I mean, at this time, this time, it's a in the in the concept of the album, you got to write a song like "Talk to Me" to match you know everything else because it's a very this is very pop. I mean, people thought Dynasty was pop. Shit, Dynasty's fucking death metal compared to this album. You know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. They poured the sugar on this one, you know? And, and I yeah. agree with you. If, you if, if it was the Bay City Rollers doing Talk To Me, you'd be like, this is the greatest song I ever heard. But yet you're going to put Talk To Me up against, uh, um, you know, what's that first song? Rip It Out. You know, when yeah. you know a song like Rip It Out, you're going to look and talk to me and say, oh, what are you doing, Ace? Come on, rip it out, you know? Right, right. Well, I mean, unfortunately, he was a sign of the time. You know, like you say, it, it was what happened. And um, I don't know what to say. It's still a great song. Well, you know? that's the beauty of it, man. I mean, yeah. we all can't like what, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, the thing song. is, you may like it. I don't like it. And it, at the end of the day, you're right, and I'm right. Just exactly. Just differently, but you, yeah. you are legitimately right when you say you like talk to me. Yeah, and 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 I I totally get your your point to it, you know. And, and I'm not here to to say to anyone. I'm just saying, try it this way. Think about listen to the album with this set of ears and tell me what you think. You know, up next is probably the piece de resistance on this album, which is Naked City. This song is outstanding on on so many levels um production uh writing uh concepts all of it uh first off a little bit one of the writers is a guy by the name of pepe castro and pepe was the lead singer i'm just gonna double check that yeah he was the lead singer was that he's the lead singer or was he the guitar player was all it? the bit good rats oh good rats yeah yeah uh, was it? Yeah, Pippi, Early Pioneer Strike, Garage Band, Blues Magoos. Oh, wait a minute. It wasn't in the Good Rats. I, I know the Good Rats were a local band from New York, right? New York, yeah. I Bruce know, Pepe. was in the band for a little bit, actually. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Did it? Good Rats? No, ah, Pepe? No, he says he's from the Blues Magoos. You must be wrong with my trivia. I know there's a Castro, because the one's dead. That was it. I know that was that. Well, I have to double check that after. You know me, I've got to dig into this stuff. But the songwriting on this is just outstanding. And what I really like about this, and you know, Gene is a character, and Gene's developed this caricature of himself as the demon, and he sings everything as the demon, you know. And with the exception of that god awful when you wish upon a star, which I think you and I, you know, it's, if 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 there's a hell, that's where Gene's gonna go and have to listen to it for the rest of his life. <laughs> yes, but, you know, there you go. Naked City. I kind of have a love hate relationship with Gene because there's stuff that he does that is really brilliant, and then there is absolute bottom feeder schlock comes from the. And Naked City is one of the first times where he sings not as the demon. You know? And that, that character doesn't come out. You know? It's just him really singing. And that's what I love about 
that song is there's some great writing, great production, great performances, and Gene sings as opposed to, you know, I, don't, I do like the demon stuff. I love Deuce. Nobody can sing it unless it's sung that way. You know, nobody could sing Gold, gold Gin, you know. You know, all those songs, the demon stuff is what is needed. But this is great that he doesn't sing it. You well, um, this has always been my favorite track off the album. Um, I got to tell a funny story how I got this album, too. Tell me. It was like in 84, I think. And my friend said, dude, if you give me a ride home, I'll give you Kiss on Mass. I got it. On. <laughs> I, said, I said, okay, you know, whatever. A free record, you know. I, I mean, I wasn't interested in on Mass at the time. But I took it. So when I took it home and played it, that song got to me. The first listen, I was like, damn, that's a good tune. Now, also of the time, if you listen closely to uh, the song Naked City, you hear Roxanne. You know, uh, the police were big at the time. You hear the little gang, gang, gang. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's a little police influence in that song. And it's just an awesome track i've always loved naked city i always point to that one as the best song on the album and look i look just like uh i know a lot of people disagree with me just like paul stanley solo album i give it chances constantly because i can't get into mm-hmm. it though a lot of people love it now unmasked is one that i keep giving it a chance and there is a song coming up that i hate it that i absolutely love now so excellent Excellent. And I, I'll tell you that I'm the same with the Paul Stanley album. I can't stand that. That's my least favorite really? of all the album. Really? I hate that album. And what, That's what, what, odd because I, I consider it like the most overrated Kiss album along with Revenge. Because Oh, I think it's oh it's overrated. The Paul Stanley's completely try. overrated. It's rubbish. I still, I still try. I still it's rubbish. But, but but what really disappoints me about the Paul Stanley solo album that at the time back then in the 70s, for me, in my opinion, Paul Stanley wrote the coolest song. Right. He wrote right. the best song. So I'm thinking the Paul Stanley solo is going to be full of these come on and love me and, you know. And uh, it's junk. That's what it is. Dude, other than Tonight You Belong to Me and It's All Right, the rest is garbage water, I think. Even those two blow. That whole album blows. I, I like those songs, but it's, you know, I, I understand I sure. if you think it blows. I just was like, God oh. damn, man. Uh, yeah. Very disappointed. It, but I can't give it the chances. It, like, like I, I said, like I said here, and even through the 80s, the reason Kiss even had a life is because of Paul Stanley. He, he is one of the principal songwriters and giving this band something. And uh, he's, yeah, and yet his solo album is the most, un. It's, it's, it sounds like a guy trying to sound like Kiss badly. And he's oh, in Kiss, which makes it even worse. Kiss sound, I know. By the way, real quick aside, I was wrong. Yeah, Pepe Castro was Pepe Marcello. Peppy and Mickey Marcello, that were Peppy was the lead singer from the Rats. Okay. So that's where I got to go. Pe- Peppy Castro was from the Blues Magoos and one of the songwriters. But um, yeah. So uh, Naked City, I think we're in agreement. And yeah, about the Paul Stanley. I, I keep giving it tries, but it doesn't work with me. So next song, What Makes the World Go Round? Another absolutely groove, really good groove. Um, you know, it, it's it's very dated. It's part of the sound of of the day. Um, you know that that that's what it sounds like. An excellent song. It would have sounded great if if it were anybody else at the time. If if, if Blackjack, the band Blackjack, you know, was it Bruce and uh, Michael Bullshit's uh, band? You know, Blackjack had done it. That would be a, a hit. But it's tainted because you know you've got the previous Kiss. Uh, you know songwriting before it and so you're like this isn't kiss well you're right it isn't but it's still a great song yeah uh, i have to disagree there man i mean there's only one song i like coming up uh the rest of it and this is one of them now if i was to say it's the worst song on am no but no nah, and and you know what man no i'm gonna keep trying i do a couple hey. times a year um but it it just does nothing for me no i i get it you know and all i'm gonna say to you is Try sitting back and listening to the groove on that song. Okay. You know, 
go back and listen to the groove and don't listen to the melody or what he's singing. Listen to how the, the groove on it, you know, and, you know, my uncle Rick who's an artist always says to me, he goes, I try to find something that I like about any piece of art, you know, even if I think it's rubbish, I'll go there and maybe I'll look at the way the guy draws or his, his, his pen, you know, the way he painted or the way he laid the paint down or the coloring he used or something like that. So, you know, I, I'm almost saying to you, and maybe I'm saying to everybody who watches is, is I'm trying to say, try looking at it this way or listening to it this way and see if you can get into it on that one. But you know, at the end of the day, there's so much music and we have only so much time left on this planet. If you can't go to it, you know, you might as well burn it to the ground too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> save, save the 42 minutes of your life and don't ever listen to this. But yeah. if you are, if you are trying, you may want to check out, like listen to the groove on it, how the rhythm works on it, as opposed to what he's singing and, you know, the way it's going. So, you know, um, next up tomorrow, I like it. I think it's just like Shandy. It's just another power pop song they're they're out there you know essentially the same song you know yeah same formula this, this song is very herald i mean i've seen a lot of people point to this one as pop power pop perfection and people love the hell out of tomorrow i and that's why i keep giving unmasked a chance and i listen to tomorrow and i'm like Hey, man, I, I don't get what these guys are hearing, man. I don't hear it. You know, and I'm a big fan of Power Pop. I mean, one of my favorite bands is Cheap Trick, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, and I love Shandy, you know? Uh, but, yeah, hey, it, man. Just, it just doesn't do anything for me. I get it. I but get I, it, bro. I do, I do see the praise quite a lot. A lot of people like Tomorrow, you know? A lot of people's favorite song off the album is Tomorrow. So, you know. It's uh, good to like Power Pop. Maybe one day, maybe one day it'll grow on me, but no, nah, so far, so, so good, so no. If uh, it does, it does, you know, it's just now, it's just, it, it, because like I say, they're the same as Shandy, so if you like Shandy and don't like that, they're, it just, you don't like it, nothing more right. to do. Same writer, same singer, same production, same album, you just don't get it, you know, that's uh, all there's to it, nothing wrong with you. I'm very curious what you think of the next one. I like this, I love Two oh, Sides of the Coin. man. I love it. It's it's listen. Ace's uh, lyrics are. Uh, and, I mean, not that anybody was Neil Peart in the band, but no. Uh, uh, and, and Gene, you know, his stuff, you know, is, is really cringeworthy. You know, especially when you think about Christmas and you know, stuff like that. But Ace's stuff has, has kind of a, a special brand. Um, and uh, two sides of the coin is just classic. But that chorus is catchy. How could you go the two sides of the I mean, you know, it's, and, and, and there's some cool, I'll tell you what I do like about the song. Again, the guitars are so emasculated. They're not as, they're kind of really thin and there's not like a lot of crunch to it. Not like, you know, when he does uh, rip it out, you know, da, 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 da. you know, you feel that you just want to get out and start moshing when you hear that. You know, this one, you know, it's, it, it's, it's very chintzy type sounding. What what I like is the way it, like I think it's in the second verse the way the bass and, and the drums sort of do this off timing do 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 you know type of little things that they kind of play with it so I think in a lot of ways the production ideas and arrangement that they did with the song kind of saves it you know but it's got a great catchy chorus no thumbs down well gladiator dies. I really don't think this will ever grow on me, dude. And, you know, and I'm the ace guy, dude. But this <laughs> song is like, wow. I want to tell you a little girl. Yeah. It's just, it's just to me, it's goofy. And and, and just, I don't know. The dude. first, like, the first sounds like it's the first song he ever wrote. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, well put. It, well put. Yeah, it sounds like an elementary. It's like a school project. Exactly. It's like kids write a song and bring it in tomorrow. Exactly. Bring in. And, and, That's and well you don't know how to sing. You don't know how to sing a counter melody. You basically what you're playing on guitar is what you're singing. Da 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 da. And uh, I need time. He's my mind. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's it's that is ridiculous. And the only thing that saves that is 
what they're doing in the rhythm section until you get to the chorus, and that chorus kind of saves it. But yeah, it's it's it, it is it's childish on on so many levels, and I guess it's the chorus and some of the production and arrangement ideas that kind of saves what is really a third grade songwriting assignment, you know. But it also proves what pull Ace really got because of his solo album. Yeah, if oh. he brought this song into the Dress to Kill sessions, it would have <laughs> never passed the the. the you know, yes. that, uh, uh, Gene and Paul would never, but no matter what, whatever the fuck Ace brought during Dynasty and, and, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, they're gonna let it, hey, bitch, I sold more than you in the solo album, so you're gonna let me put it on. So that's why it's on there. He hit home runs on that solo album. He hit home runs. They're, they're essentially, perfect. isn't a bad, really bad song on that. So, and, you know, it was reciprocated by, you know, uh, uh, you know, and we could get down to solo album type thing, uh, concept maybe on some other time, but yeah, that that is that, that is like you said, a perfect album. And yeah, I'm sure he leveraged that to bring more of his material in there. Like you said, there are no fingerprints whatsoever of Peter Chris on this album. I mean, besides not even playing, he's not even singing, and he doesn't have any writer's credit. So he's essentially gone on this. So it's Dean, Paul, and Ace. That have it and and in, in, in the situation and even even the Ace stuff a lot of you know Vinnie Poncia is all over this song, songwriting so Ace well we'll get to that in a second next up she's so European oh boy this would be a perfect song in my opinion if that. She's one of a kind, all of a mine was not in there. <laughs> that part drives me through the roof. Something else about the song I love. Again, he, a little bit of the demon kind of creeps out in this one, you know. And uh, I don't care what anyone says. The lyrics could say she makes love unabashed, but he says she makes love like a bastard. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> what he's saying, okay. Tell me anything else on the lyrics, you know. I, I I would even sing it that way. She makes love like a bastard. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, this would be a great song if that that and 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 proof. The proof, in my opinion, is later on where they they continue that section without stopping immediately, where they go, "She's so European." Da, 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 she's so European, one of a kind. You know what I'm saying? But it's like for that second part there, you actually hear what that chorus sound like if they did not do that idiotic part. That I absolutely can't stand about this song. Is that yeah. it? Man. Everything else I love. Yeah, I don't like it. And I don't like that. Do, 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 those keyboard noises. Uh, I did see him perform it live, though, believe it or not. I saw Gene play this alone with an acoustic guitar at the, at the Gene Simmons Vault in Miami. He actually played this song, which was shocking. And I was like, well, this is interesting to see him play alone on acoustic guitar. I think it translated better that way without all the kitchen sink stuff in it, but at the same time, it's still, ooh, not a fan. I, yeah, like I told you, if, 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 if you rip that section out there, you notice there's a big difference. I think, and you know, that the keyboards might be, again, you know, there's some production elements of the time that have, that have kind of, um, in my opinion, destroyed it, that I agree with you on it. But, you know, circling back to you saying, seeing him doing an acoustic, it's one of the things that I loved about the Kiss um, acoustic album is that they dug into some of these songs and they didn't play like the greatest hits. They dug into stuff where they did um, uh, off the Dynasty album. Sure uh, Knows Something. Sure Knows Something. They did um, Coming, home. Coming Home and stuff like that, that, you know, where they revisited some of those songs and actually brought out the best and said, wow. I mean, sure know something sounds outstanding, you know, really. So, you know, I, I will say that to you. This is where the album, in my opinion, these last three is where the album just becomes jizz and goes down, down, down the, down the, these three, you know, are just the filler material 
as far as I'm concerned, easy as it seems. It's another what makes the world go round in the sense that it's another groove based song, you know, a disco groove based kungas and stuff like that to kind of give it that, you know, I don't know if it's kungas, but very percussive vibe. But it's, I tried listening to it on a groove. I mean, there's some really cool guitar things going on it, but it just doesn't seem to say what I think is a very, very poor song. Well, I don't know. This is the one that grew on me. I absolutely love this song that where I've always hated it. I've always hated it. And, uh, but well, there's hope for me. There's hope yeah. for me then. Yeah. Uh, Cause I heard it one day. I forgot what the situation was that that song came on. It might've been, I was listening to the album or I don't know what, or maybe it was on YouTube or something. And, uh, man, I'm listening to the song. I'm like, Damn, this ain't bad. I like the do 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 do. Yeah, it's total disco flavored pop, and the, I never wanted to be here. You just wasted my time. I'm like listening to this shit going, man. I, it was like out of the blue. I was like, I get it. This is a great fucking song. I love it. So, so this is what I'm saying to you about what makes the world go round because they're the same song. So again, it's which what what you got in this one. Is what I'm. It, that's what I'm saying with what makes the world go round. Where you're, you're just, and maybe that's where I'm going to be, like one step away. Where maybe I need to kind of get something out of my head that I'm focusing on. And I love it when you do that with a song when you've hated something or you're just like, and then the one day you're like, Ding. oh man, I get it, I get it. And so, th- thank you for educating me on that one. And yeah. kind of re- just have a great groove. I love the. Yeah. Groove. I love the, you know, it's very disco-ish, but hey, man, I ain't a kid no more where I used to like death before disco. Now I, I look back at a lot of disco songs that I didn't like as a kid, and I appreciate them. Maybe some nostalgic, but holy shit, some of those fucking disco songs are great now to me. And exactly. This, this one's exactly. total disco. And to me, it's an awesome disco song now. You know, I just love it. I love it. I, I find it the same as what makes the world go round. I find what makes the world go around better. Now, the next time I listen to this album, I'm going to really, you yeah, know, just, yeah, see, just, see, just, for the same reason that I'll say to you with what makes the world go round, right. we'll give each other a homework assignment here. Okay. And I'll check it out. There's no, there's no timeline or whatever. It's just, I'm going to now go listen to it the same ears like you say, and you're going to do the same. And then one time when we listen to it, we'll, it'll click. Could be a year from now. Could be five minutes from now. Could be, five minutes before we drop dead how, we'll get to how, how the, long have you lived with this album um i would say since about the early 90s okay early to mid 90s right on and you right, got so, um next one's torpedo girl right am i right yeah 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 okay Ooh. this one this one is awful I'm sorry. I do not like this song. I I I agree. Yeah. I I can't do it. I I, I you know it, it, it's there's nothing like with talk to me or two sides of the coin that have a good chorus or some things about it that salvage it. There's nothing that salvages it. That rhythm, that beat, you know, that just, everything about it just annoys me. And the chorus, there is no catchy chorus as far as I'm concerned on this. There's nothing there that makes me go, you know, let's feel all right, torpedo girl. You know? Yeah, so. It's hot, it's hot garbage. I, I never, ever liked this song. And to me, it's heartbreaking because I love Ace. You know, I still would say it's better than uh, Two Sides, but that's not saying much to me, you know, but yeah. it's goofy, it's it's a little off kilter, yeah. um, it just doesn't seem well structured, and uh, I think it sucks, but nothing to me sucks more than the last song. Hallelujah. <laughs> the last song is like, oh my God, what the fuck? The worst way, you know, one of the things that I love about, and back in the day, and 
you know, I'll say this to any of your listener, any of your viewers that watch, you know, the younger generation, and I don't care about, <clears throat> I'm not going to say it was better in my day, or it's not going to say that you got it worse, or I got it better, or worse, or whatever like that, because I think life, there's a lot of cool things that's happening now that I'm so glad it exists, that didn't exist back then, and then there's other things, you know, whatever. Um, and, but one thing that I do say that the younger listeners don't have, is the ability to listen to an album as an album. You know, you just nowadays go on Spotify, you make your little playlist of your favorite songs, and you miss songs that maybe aren't good for a solo thing, but are great for an album. And there's so many great albums that have a great ending song, like Fire of Unknown Origins got that song, Don't Turn Your Back, by Boys Are Called, Don't Turn Your Back. It's It comes right off the heels of Joan Crawford. And it's such a great little, like a last shot before you go to bed a last sip of tea or something like that it's not even a real song it's it's kind of like a groove you know so you're like yeah you know i like that the thing no they, they don't they don't even give us a good song to like give us one last little way to go I mean, in, in a sense they should have ended it with naked city so if you go on the trip you could actually have a song like naked city um sort of sell you off and you go like oh i had this journey of this album and there's some ups and there's some downs eh, some stuff but at the end of the day i feel like that last piece of the puzzle fit in place no yeah nope. guaranteed the last two are the worst two you know yeah to, you me, to me man ending an album with a good song makes, makes you wanting more right, right. yes Yes. Yeah, and and the, ending it with a shit album, you don't feel uh, well. At least on my end, I don't feel like going back and listening to it. You know, it's like, God, what a what a thud of a of a a, a fucking ending uh, to this album. It's a and you know when I interviewed Gene Simmons, I asked him what is his least favorite Kiss album. He said Unmasked. <sighs> he did say Unmasked. I I wouldn't think it's the worst. You know, I can think of a couple worse than Unmasked, but, but. Um, yeah, I, I just, I, I, and this is part of my thing is, as he, you know, he said one thing that pissed me off where they said, what's your favorite song? And he said, the one that makes me the most money. Get out of here, you know, yeah. and, you know, and, and to just be so disparaging about stuff, it kind of bothered me because, you know, songwriting is like a, a, a a process that you know i mean I, I, it's a tough process I, I don't consider myself a songwriter i've written a couple songs and songwriting itself is just a really tough process and i work with some great songwriters and i'm in and i'm in awe of them you know and i get it sometimes where you know you might say um you wrote this song about a breakup or something like that you can't sing it anymore but the world loves it right you know it's everybody's favorite song but you have some emotions about it that you know where it came from, so it's hard for you to sing or whatever. I could respect that, but to say something like, you know, or to say a song like, this is my favorite song. Like, if if, if Gene was going to say, well, this is my favorite song, you're all that I want because I wrote it about my mom, and, you know, she she was in the concentration camp, and she's a survivor, and I, I, I wrote this about her, and you can go like, wow, Gene, that song absolutely blows, but the fact that you wrote this powerful, prophetic, beautiful you know, thing to your mom, I can respect you for it. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? I still think it sucks, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's well, it's cool. like it's like when you wish upon a star. It's like, you know, it's very special to him. It blows, but you know, yeah. the meaning behind it. You right. Know, a little immigrant kid and he saw, you know, Jiminy Cricket singing this and uh right. you know, much, uh, set him on his path of, you know, Going for the stars. So know? when you say something like that, like, oh, wow, well, whatever one makes me the most money, it just sort of, to me, it goes like, fuck you very much, you know? Why was I giving, you know what I mean? Some of these, I don't know. Yeah, you know? Gene says a lot of stupid shit. Yeah. Yeah, I just, you know, well, you know, we could go down that rabbit hole here, but I'm going to try to keep your, you know, your episode focused on this song and you know, maybe we can do other episodes talking if you feel like having me i i had a gas 
you know, with you. Yeah, 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 no, no. It, it was great yeah. having you on. I'm sure I'll have you back when we talk about yeah. some other Kiss albums and stuff. Uh, but, Doesn't uh, have to be Kiss. There's a lot of music out there, you know. Yeah, yeah I can have you on something else. But um, yeah, before we go, uh, you have anything you want to plug? What's up with the Baphomet Lounge? Tell me about that. So, so <laughs> you'll get a kick out of this. So, you know, I am a metalhead. All my buddies are metalheads. I mean, I'm, I'll be 52 in March. Um, and I got, you know, there's, you know, some buddies up, up, upwards to now and they're cl close to late fifties. And we went to, we went to a lot of metal shows and, and stuff like that. And my two buddies, Sex Martin and Rocco's Tacos used to love going to that, that, that satanic black metal stuff. And I can't stand the stuff. I got nothing against it, but that <laughs> just, it just, you know, um, it's cool. I respect all music on the planet. I just don't get it. So they would they would actually make these tapes. And so they actually had a website called Baphomet's Lounge, basically saying Baphomet's Lounge Records. Uh, uh, and they would make just, they love the stupid names of these bands, you know, Bork Knocker and Rotting Christ. And just, you know, they, they kind of dug it. So they let it lapse. But I said, dude, can I take that? And Rocco's Taco said, go ahead, man, take it. So I took the name. And the intent for me is it's a re it's my record label, which right now I only release the stuff I've released and the bands I produced. But uh, what I'd like to do is go out and find some of those, you know, kind of like Rock Candy Records and um, uh, Red Cherry Records and some of those other uh, great record labels out there, that boutique labels, and they find those albums that, you know, maybe just, some, you know, that the world won't hear and they'll remaster them, they'll re-release -re it. So Baphomet's Lounge is sort of the umbrella thing that it, it's a joke it's just part of a joke that i think is just hilarious you know and so that's why you know i kind of put my own face on it and uh you know made it, made it to be the i'm sort of the bat i'm sort of the um uh, mascot of my own my own little company so so that's that, that's what it is yeah plugging i mean yeah you know um i do what i do um i love music you can go to my website, nssworld.com. You can go to baphometslounge.com. I got videos I've made and songs I produce and all that other stuff. But to me, I'm just happy to come onto your show. You know, what you're doing and I support is that, you know, that's you. There's a couple other people um, out there I've seen. Uh, see a Tranquility, um, uh, another guy and stuff like that I check out. But you have that sort of bent that I like, your sense of humor that that pulls me in. But I'm glad that there's people out there sort of keeping music alive and keeping the love of collecting, buying, listening, enjoying, you know, and not letting music die. So for me, it's just all part of the, yeah, you want to check out what I got, go to baphometslounge.com, go to nssworld.com. There's a lot of stuff. I've got whatever music videos, my CD collection concerts I've been to. I'm a big archivalist. I'm more like a music historian, but I'm... You know, I have a day gig as a software engineer. I'm a consultant. I'm very happy to just be on your show and talk about music and kind of help foster the the movement, as you'd say, because people like you who are so dedicated to keeping this love alive. So if I, if at the end of the today, if one person listened to what makes the world go round and says, wow, I get the groove on it. And if I finally get, easy as it seems that's the greatest joy ever i think people don't get this you know people so busy like you know it's a friday night and everyone's going to the hip bar and i'm like okay cool you know I'll, i'm not you know i just picked up i literally picked up i've got the jethro toll Stormwatch dvd or uh, cd box set yesterday i got i i found this guy frankie miller I picked up a box set of all his stuff. He's supposed to be like Scottish Rod Stewart. I, I you know, uh, I got a bunch of uh, 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 Spirit CDs coming in. You know, I bought you know, over two hundred dollars worth of CDs for Christmas. That's what I do. I love it. I've got thirty four hundred CDs. Right. That's what I love doing. You know, I see you having in the background your um, when you show in that one room and you got yeah. I saw you got the Union album i saw them twice i saw them in a small club in front of 20 people they're fantastic nice. i think the first i think you that's a damn shame that karabi they never 
did it, you know. I got a cold closet. They're all my rock shirts. Here's my Kiss Dynasty or my Kiss Elder shirt. Cool. I think, I think I'm wearing it here. Am I getting faded out by this stuff? I love that one. Yeah. I mean, I got, you know, I mean, I've got, and, and one of the things that I, I've actually done, I think I sent you the thing in my series, but I'm not as dedicated to the web the video stuff as you are. Because it takes a lot of time, and for me, I'd rather be doing production work, you know, for my time. But I actually had a series, uh, and I should do more of it, One and Done. And I picked a couple of albums by bands that only put out one album and were phenomenal. Um, a great, you know, um, ASAP, Adrian Smith and Project. That album is fantastic. I do a whole video on that. Um, band called The Archangels. I don't know if you ever checked them out. They were uh, Charlie Sexton, Do Doyle Bromhall the second. Um, and then the, the, the rhythm section from uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. They put out only one album, Archangels, and then Doyle Bromhall wound up getting into heroin, and all, you know, drugs. And then they broke up. Now, Doyle Bromhall sort of showed up again, uh, played with uh, Roger Waters on his uh, tours back in the 90s and stuff like that. So, uh, and they actually did eventually release another album of like some B-sides and some live stuff. You know, one and done. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of, great music out there that you know never had the longevity like say a kiss or a sabbath or an iron maiden and whatever but you know and that's kind of what baphomet's lounge my dream in in the thing is to be able to find those one and done albums and maybe they didn't get there and say hey check this out i've got a bunch of cds from my collection there's a great a uh, couple record labels I think it's light in the attic record label there's a guy um um he died uh his album is called ufo i'm trying to think of it they've, they've actually released all of his albums but he he went for he went from LA because he wasn't making it. And he had a lot of people into him. He went to Nashville. Somewhere on the way, he stopped at a hotel room in Arizona and he's disappeared. And they've never found him since. Wow. You know? And I'm so glad that his music still lives. Nick Drake only put out three albums, committed suicide at the age 25. The most haunting, beautiful voice you ever heard. 50 years later, Volkswagen did a commercial with Pink Moon on it. And it was cool. I was like, yeah, that's great. You know what I'm saying? He never probably knew how much he affected people with his music. You know? And that's all it is for me. You know? So I'm, I love it when you do that stuff. I love it that there's people out there that, you know, you'll say, oh, so-and-so, you know, bought this, this box set for me and stuff like that. And to me, that's an investment because you're going to love it. You're going to you're gonna talk about it. You're going to, it means a lot to you. So you know, and all all you people out there, all your friends who who watch this video, you know, hey man, I get it. I'm down with you, man. Keep the faith, you know. Yeah, man, support music, man. Support music, man. Keep the faith, Black Oak, Arkansas style. You know, we need it. Yeah, exactly, man. Because music soothes the soul, man. If uh, the music didn't exist, we'd be out there killing people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You it's know? a great. It's the greatest drug ever. Exactly. So, so to me, it's like, hey, thanks for having me on. Thanks Thank for allowing you. me to have my opinion. You know, I just wanted to come out with a different perspective on that album in the hopes that maybe I can tempt some people into checking it out with a different set of ears. Well, there's but a no. lot of people you'll see in the comment section. There's going to be a lot of people saying how much they love Unmasked because Unmasked is very loved by many people. I mean, and Great. I, I, I have a feeling the majority of the comments below will be uh defending how great unmasked is so yeah excellent and you know what for those of you that don't like it i get it there's yeah. stuff I, there there's there listen I, I, I'll, I'll say this and i'll i'll, I'll leave that you know just because david bowie he's an artist that as far as i'm concerned checks all the boxes that i should love you know he's innovative he was innovative he was progressive he was always i still don't get him i bought four or five of his cds I love Let's Dance, yeah, but I and I really try. I love like the uh, electronic and stuff. I like like Tangerine Dream, Jean Michel Jarre, Kraftwerk, that stuff. And I saw like Low and, and Heroes and all that stuff. He had that was part of his Berlin period, so I got that stuff. I still don't get him. I don't know why I don't get him. You know, I, and I, I got, checked out Station to Station. I'll I'll have to get that next. That's a you know? great one. And uh, uh, the Man Who Sold the World is a phenomenal album. So. You know, I don't know if you'll get them or not, but those two albums to me are my favorite. Yeah, I, I, no, it, I exactly. love Low too. I love Low a lot. I, I don't I, get I, it. I would put Station to Station, Man Who Sold the World, and 
Uh, the Rise and Fall of Singing Stardust is my top three um, David for, Bowie albums. For all intents and purposes, I should worship the ground he walks on. And for some reason, I just don't get him. I keep trying, but I just don't get him. So I understand that. And, and I hope that someday I do get him. You know, and I remember when certain, uh, the Moody Blues have some of the best pop hits I ever heard, but their albums, ugh, it's all, I feel it's all filler with one good song. You know, but I remember when I got old Genesis, I remember I started listening, took me three or four years of listening to some of the old Genesis, but one day I was, ding, oh, I get it now, right. you know? And, well, and, and, hopefully, hopefully that will happen to you with David Bowie, because I, I absolutely love the man. I thought he was a very, you know, yeah, he was a chameleon, he would always change his style, but yeah, at some, at some points I couldn't get into some of the stuff he did, but for the most part, I mean, like I said, man who sold the world. Station to Station and uh, the Rise and Fall of Siggy Stardust are like heavily rotated in my house. I play those albums quite a bit, you know. That's excellent. And 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 may I eventually get that vibe, you know. And Please. until that time, I'll keep trying, brother. Yeah, keep trying yeah. And, and and try the three I told you that I haven't heard yet. Those might do the trick because they're they're awesome. But yeah, Love is awesome too. So if you didn't get low, I don't know, man. You know? Let me see. Here. Let me go to my CD collection real quick here. Let me just take. I have it all online, so you can see it all online. Uh, yeah, if you go to nssworld.com, just you can click on CDs. Let's see what I have on it. Black. Uh, Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath. What's it called? Boston. David Bowie. I got the first album, '68, which I actually like. Then I got Low '77, Hero '77, Lodger '79, Scary Monsters '80, '83, Let's Dance, and then. Uh, uh, it came on 2018, but it was a serious Moonlight tour of 83, you know, live, double disc. So I've got two, four, six, eight CDs by him. And Well, just give know, those I told you a shot. Give those three a shot, because I think they're those are my three favorites. So. Excellent. I will and, give then them low, and then I will go low. And low will be my fourth favorite. Yeah, but anyway, I, brother, thank you so it. much uh, for your time, mm -hmm. man. And I, I'm sure we'll have you back. Um, I'd love to. Thanks for I say me. I say we'll have you back because I'm schizophrenic. I don't know if you know this. No, um, that's fine. Yeah, so we'll we'll have you back. And uh thank you so much, man. You you're you're great and we're gonna have you back. And uh hey Noel, smack him a gob, man. Man, smack him a gob. This is NSS from Baphomet's Lounge. Smack him a gob. Right on, brother. That was great, dude. Thanks, so okay. this will be up two weeks from this Wednesday. All right, send me a message, and I'll, I'll hype it. I'll get it out on my Facebook page. I'll change my website, so I'll have a guest station of all the times I guest on people and stuff like that. It'll be great. Yeah, it'll be up uh, Not uh, yeah, two weeks from this Wednesday. Two weeks from tomorrow will be up, and I will send you a text. Let yeah, you know. rock on. And yeah, let me know if you ever want to do something. Come on on. I'm, I'm just happy right I'm just ha to chat. You know? we'll, and we'll do something else in the future for sure. Yeah, maybe we'll find a Sabbath album we can't agree on. Ooh, that would only be 13 with me because I love everything else. Yeah, yeah, that album sucks. Yeah, yes, so, I agree. I yeah. love every other Sabbath album. I mean, I'm iffy with Forbidden, but I don't hate I it. I love Forbidden. I love I, Forbidden. It's I, my I favorite. I'm, I'm, I'm Really? Well, Forbidden. Uh, Forbidden is like in the top three for me. Number one okay. is, is Born Again. Oh, born again. You know what? You know what album I love that I think I don't think you like. I I, I hate rectal ecstasy. I hate that album. I think you like that album. I hate that album. Who? What? Rectal ecstasy. Rectal ecstasy. Oh, I love. I love. That. I hate that album. I hate yeah, that. A lot album. of people do though. I love Never Say Die. Oh, I love, love that album. My 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 top two. Would, I would say Born Again, Heaven and Hell, and then um, Sabotage. You know, I'm not a fan of the first three albums. I think the first the finale at best. I really think from volume four, they became the band that they should be, except for Rectal Ecstasy. Um, and then, you know, I, and I love Live Evil. That's one of my favorite albums, too. You know. Right on. So, yeah, maybe it'll, maybe we'll do like a Forbidden episode. Classic. I, mean, I, I, I don't hate it, though. There's some songs I'm like, eh. But, but Born Again, for me, is the best album they did without Ozzy. Hands down. Best I, I, I put it up above the Dio stuff, man. Yeah, I do too. That, uh, I remember the day I first heard that. 
Yeah. We'll, we'll have to do a born again. Uh, we'll have to do a born again. Oh yeah, born again would be good to talk about. Too. You know what? When the remix comes out. Yeah. Let's do that good. because I want to hear that remix. Yeah, that's when we'll do it. Yeah, rock on. We'll do many more. All right, bro.